One of the best things about carp fishing is you get to meet some mega talented people from around the world, like this fella. This month I'm over in California where I joined rock star carp and Christian Alderweireld on a road trip around some of his local lakes. We begin the trip with a three day session on State Lower Lake in the northwest of Los Angeles County. Can you believe the news story is that it's too cold out here? How can this be too cold and out there is sunshine? <laughs> Look at this guy! <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's so cold. <laughs> Put on the jacket, dumb God. fuck. <laughs> Just look at it out there, that sunshine, that's gorgeous weather. I don't know how anybody could say that is bad weather, but I suppose that's the difference between LA and being in England. So we loaded up then and got everything in there. Just tired of for a week we've got the rods we've got the bivvies the bed chairs the food the bike everything it's a big lake we're going to be fishing so the bike will come in really handy for having a look around and see if we can see any fish so yeah let's get to the lake good then for the the weather on the lake it's nice and crisp it's it's a little cool which yeah. is fine I don't think it's gonna matter but as long as the sun is out I think uh, we'll be fine yes the two two nights and then if we do a third one yes yeah many times let's go do some fishing and camp on top just deciding which swim to fish Apparently we've got a depth of about 15 foot out here. Nice and gravelly, nice and hard as you can see all around us. So that's the plan is to put the rods out during the day and then we're going to camp up there in the camping spots. Because you're not allowed to night fish on this lake so that's what we're going to do. First things first then, a massive thank you to Ant Molyneux from Avid for sorting all my gear out. He's managed to send it all over here successfully. I've got a bivvy behind me and that's got a nice bed chair in there and a sleeping bag. I've even got a mattress cover and he sorted myself out with two rods, two reels. I've even got an unlucky mat so thank you ever so much for sorting it for me Ant because if it wasn't for you I'd be struggling to fish at the moment. But um, what we've got in front of me now is got a nice little swim. It looks pretty good. Wind's blowing from right to left, it's quite cold the wind is at the moment but um, there is some heat in the sun which is nice, it's probably about 15 degrees and all I've done is cast out a marker float and roughly 60 yards out you've got quite a lot of gravel that comes in quite close in and right on the edge of the gravel is where I'm fishing. I've got one rod just off the edge of the bait and the other one which is over about 100 boys or so. So they're scattered over a, a broad area of probably 20 or 30 yards range and um, yeah, it's just a case of uh, sitting back now and waiting and hoping that something happens, but it's great to be out here. Great to be in California, I've never been here before, so let's hope I can get myself my first California car. Typically, we've picked the worst swim possible to set up in because everybody's got the sun, apart from us at the moment, and it's freezing here. Really cold. There's a look down the bank. To where we've got to go and we get a bite. Got to be careful, I've already been on my arse once, slipped over, and Christian's got a dodgy leg as well, so came off a motorbike a few years ago. So he's got a big limp, so we've got to be careful. But yeah, there's fish showing now, so it's looking good, looking promising. That would definitely a carp was just showed down here. Heard it come clean out the water. And there's the rings from it. Exactly the same sort of distance I'm casting to now, so bingo. Oi oi. Just had one. But unfortunately I didn't capture it on 
on film because my head camera is dead. Came belting down the bank up there, which is where we set up, and completely forgot my head camera, which is which is charging up. So I didn't catch it on film, but I knew I was going to get one because uh, there's been fish showing. It's about an hour now into daylight, and yeah, great. Great to get off the mark, my first California carp, so let's have a look at it. Great start to the morning, and uh, I started with this nice long common, and then Christian's just had one moments later, so brilliant morning so far, mate. Great. Great. First day, two fish. Can't complain on that, huh? Brilliant, mate. Great fishing. California fishing. Hopefully we get some more. Fingers crossed. So Christian, yeah, you look good, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> Growing that hair back, that metal, the metal locks back out. Tell us, tell the viewers, mate, how, how you're in a living. What's your job? Well, I got a great job, which is playing music for a living, fiddling the guitar and bass strings, and um, I was I've been playing music since you know my early teens, maybe 14, 15 years old, and uh, by the time I was 18, I got a little more uh, serious about it, I would say, and started playing into. Uh, some Belgian metal bands and maybe some Belgian rockabilly bands. And um, from there I went. Uh, I always wanted to visit America ever since I was a kid. So by the time I was about um, uh, 20, 21, I um, purchased myself a ticket and off I went. And when I got to America, I bumped into a band called Biohazard and they basically uh, introduced me to Fear Factory and that was it. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest crowd you've played in front of? Oh, definitely about around 200,000. I think it was Dynamo. There was probably about 160 on the ground, and then with the camping side, probably was close, close to 200. And that was in 1995. Wow. And that was the first time I got to see my mom and all my friends back over in Belgium after I left the country to go play music. Yeah. So it was, it was a good homecoming. Everybody's like, wow, and big crowd. And everyone's like, oh my God, Christian is doing it. So it was very rewarding. Yeah. And, uh, when I grew up, all I did was play music and fishing. Those were my two, and skateboarding too. Yeah. Skateboarding got me into the music, and uh, um, all the skateboarders would be like, you know, what are you doing? You going fishing? Oh, like, you know, they didn't get it. How long have you been carping? I started carp fishing. You know, I started pole fishing first, but uh, catching carp on a pole, and it always snapping off my line, and I was, oh, how can I land one of these? And my grandfather used to say, well, you need a better rod and reel, and. So I started studying it a little bit more and then you know, I got introduced to carp fishing a little bit um, by going to my local lake in Antwerp where I saw uh, a carp angle land, a pretty big fish, probably like a, a mid-20 or 30 or something. And um, I remember standing there just looking at it, I couldn't believe it. It was just the most magnificent, magnificent uh, spectacle of him landing that fish and playing it the whole time and the swirls in the water, you're just like, wow. What what is that in there, you know? i never forget it, the, the, you know, it's so vivid today still. And um, when he got on the bank, it was a carp, and I got my stuff together and I showed up at the lake. And I didn't know it was very like, you know, you just didn't show up at a lake and started swinging boilies and carp rods around with uh, local anglers. So I had to learn the ways of um, how, you know, the rules went and, um, and they put me kind of more towards the back of the lake and I remember catching uh, like maybe like a 12, 13 pounder or something like that. And that, you know, that feeling was just the best. Um, I caught on a, on a pineapple boil at the time. This might be like 1984, 1985. Wow. And I never forget walking into the tackle shop and it smelled like cell. And I had no idea what the smell of cell was at the time. And um, it was that coconut smell. And even today, when I smell the cell, that, that coconut, it pulls me back to 1984, to that, you know, yeah. that environment. It's amazing. 
So, which is the most special carp that you've caught in your career then? And I know what, it's, what you're going to say. Well, you better say it anyway, because I'm a northern angler. <laughs> um, I went to uh, England this summer to play shows. We played downloads some big festivals with uh, Guns N' Roses and uh, some other big bands. And um, I stayed over for a week. And some of the tracker guys took me to a lake near Nottingham where I didn't really have any success, was only one nighter. And then uh, off I went to Cumbria, to, to Oak Banks, which is all the way up north, to meet a buddy of mine. Everyone was kind of wondering, why are you going up there to try to catch a carp? It's not the easiest thing. you most likely going to blank. And you know, you, if you're here, you want to make the best of your, your time and try to catch something at least. But I had a, you know, a good friend that I've never met, and I needed to see him and hang out with his family and stuff. So I went up to Oak Bank, and they put me on the lake for about a week. I was able to fish there. and. Uh, I sat in the spot for five, six days straight without moving, and finally, on the last day, an hour before I left, I landed a 30 pound common. 32. A Cumbrian 30 pounder. A Cumbrian That's a special carp, mate. That's a special and, carp. I mean, for me, I don't. I know it's a special carp, but I'm not from the UK, and I didn't grow up in England, so I don't know the, really the, the, the magnitude of mm. how hard it is to really get a, a 30 up north. Mm. You know, a lot of anglers telling me, like, there's professional anglers that never even caught a 30 up north. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a proper I feel very car. lucky and very blessed to have been able to get that experience and and my very first UK fish. Yeah, yeah. And being a thirty, which is like yeah. Yeah, that's special, mate. That is. So where where are we today? Tell tell everybody where we, where we are today. What venue this is, and um, how many times you fished it before? And we are in California, and this is Castaic, which is uh, a little bit up in the mountains. The elevation is a little higher from. Uh, Los Angeles, so Los Angeles will be right here. You get into the mountains, so that's why we're feeling the more frost. It's a little colder out here, um, and this is a drinking reservoir, but it has a big back lake upstairs behind the dam, which is it looks like a big French you know, thirty thousand acre reservoir type of type of deal. Uh, this is a smaller lake. I've never fished up there. Uh, I noticed the water levels a lot down, but it's a great lake, and you can set up the camping sites um, in America. Well, especially on the West Coast, you're dealing with a lot of rules. East Coast rules are a little linear, but on the, in Texas, you can put out eight rods if you wanted to and bivy up and sleep there for a month. Nobody will say anything. But California rules are a little stricter and you know, two rods only. Um, you can only sleep on the designated camping sites, which might not even be near the rods. But, um, you know, we're still pretty close. We're only like, like 30 yards out. Mm -hmm. and um, But this is a really good spot because you do can get a chance to camp up and really get the full carping experience. Mm -hmm. And for us US carp anglers, you know, um, if there's some rules, you know, you have to adjust to the rules, but a lot of night fishing is forbidden in a lot of the lakes, the park lakes in Los Angeles or near California because of, you know, um, violence or uh, drugs or, you know, anything like that. But, you know, if you can find a good lake out here that you know, allows night fishing, which is very rare, mm. it's, it's awesome, you know. You, sit here for three, four days and, mm. and catch some nice commons. Well, this time I've got a nice dark fish. Most of the other fish that I've been catching have been a little bit ghosty, so it's nice to get one a little bit darker. This is the life of a rock star. It's getting text messages from girls saying, hi, do you want to meet me tonight? Now the life of a carp angler is, hi, can you tell me how to tie the Ronnie rig? Yeah, you're coming today. <laughs> Crazy. What's he like? How the other half live? Looking fish, mate. Yes, 
get it in. They're powerful, big fins for such a smaller fish. You can tell they need big fins to really get around here. Awesome, mate. Awesome. So what's a rock star eat for breakfast then? Well, vegan butter. <laughs> Made from plants. And what's that stuff? Vegan spaghetti with vegan meat. It is fucking great. <laughs> I'm just gonna slam that in this fucking rich monkey thing. <laughs> Every other word is the F word. Beep. <laughs> That's a rock star life for you. Enjoy Sorry. it, mate. I'll change it to bloody. <laughs> Which is definitely bite time anyway, first thing in the morning. Another common. Big, yeah, it don't matter. It's a nice common, mate. That's that's what it's about. Yeah, it's a nice fish. Lovely. Not far away. Just get his head up. Yes. <laughs> well done, dude. <laughs> Proper rock star pose as well. Good on you, mate. Well, here we are. Last fish of the session at Lake Estate in California. We're going to go play a big rock show tonight. And then uh, tomorrow we're going to look for some more lakes. Hopefully catch some more fish. Tonight, he's got his gig in about an hour's time, and uh, just getting himself all warmed up. Looking forward to watching him. He's just said to me a few minutes ago, he's got carp pushing on the brain, so he's got to get himself focused for tonight's show. So. Christian was uh, playing a gig well, uh, in Lentil Beach. Cheap in the no, it's all right. Don't worry about it. And uh, yeah, interesting night as well because we uh, we played the gig. There was a big punch up on the dance floor. We then got stopped by the police on the way back. And uh, a lazy morning, lying in and running on the beach. So just off to Lake Number Two now. Going to have a look at it. It's raining. Yeah, California and uh, it's not as sunny as everybody thinks it is. So here we go, let's go and have a look at this place. Simon brought the English weather. Yeah, right. The carpy weather, as, we, <laughs> as you guys call it. Yeah, it's proper good conditions, and this lake's got some biggins in, so let's hope we get lucky. Imagine that this place is absolutely packed in the summer months. It's set in absolutely stunning environments as well. Really stunning location. 
it's not very often you go somewhere and they warn you about mountain lion but we have been when we came from the entrance today we've had to pitch the tents up in the campsite area which is here and then over there is where the lake is and that's where we're about to go in a minute and have a look at a few features and get ready for tomorrow because there's no night fishing on this place like a lot of the lakes in California so it's just a case of prepping the swim finding your spots and putting a bit of bait out and then hoping that the carp turn up the next day so that's the next stop going to find a swim wow what a lake this is just one of the bays leading off the main point that we're going to be fishing and it looks so carpy if anything can be carpy in America but there's loads of reeds and gin clear water what a backdrop as well it's just absolutely beautiful it really is another thing we've been warned about keeping an eye out for is uh, rattlesnakes because this area is known for having those at the right time of the year. I don't think it's the, the main season for them, but as you can see, it's really, really dry, almost desert-like, not desert-like, it's one word, but just uh, very dry. God, it'd be so good to catch a carp out of this place. What a background. So what we're going to do today is just put some bait out and uh, watch the sun go down, I think. Look at that. Stunning place. Well, we're having a campfire tonight, so out in the wilderness, keeping us nice and warm. There we go. Just collecting a few sticks and branches. It's all nice and dry. So once that sun goes down, soon starts to get a bit damp. Yeah, campfire's not happened because what happened, Chris? Uh, Some douchebag told us we weren't allowed to take the wood from the banks. We're not allowed to cut up the cut up dry wood that's laying on the side of the bank. That's cut up. By, even when, even though we didn't cut it up. <laughs> it's cut up, ready to go. It's cut up like please take this to the campsite. Yeah. So the rangers told us we're not allowed to take the wood to the campsite to burn it. So. Don't know if you can hear that, that's the coyotes in the distance calling each other. Guys, stop now. Is that? Well, we've had visitors last night. We don't know what it is, but uh, something's gone in the bag. That bag there, that green bag, and picked up the oats out of the bag and walked all the way down here. So we don't know what it was. It was probably a raccoon or something like that. Raccoon. Yeah, it's gone all the way across the road here. So yeah. The bag is gone. The bag's gone, everything's gone out in the wilderness. Oh, I see some more right there. Yeah. I did hear something last night, but I don't know what it was. You heard it? I heard something, yeah, oh but I, I thought it was you. I thought it was you rumbling around in your bags. I kept hitting the... Did you? I kept hitting the... the Sorry, the bivvy. Like, Get out of here! <laughs> I don't know what it was, but... Uh, you kept yeah. waking me up. God, this is proper like wild times. fishing, this is. Awesome noticed as well that the gas bottle has uh, I always put my gas bottle outside the bivvy and the gas bottle's been been moved under here so Christian's saying it's definitely raccoons because they're a little bit mischievous move things about but look that's gone right underneath there it was over there by the bivvy little buggers that's what I like to see no one in the car park <laughs> what somebody something tangled <laughs> 
No, it's just it's one in of there. those mysterious tangles that no idea how it's happened. Maybe the raccoon's done it. Here we go. Loaded up. <coughs> Ready for the first day. decided to do something a little bit different because we've baited that point area and I, for some reason I don't know why I just felt a little bit boxed in because Christian's to me right and, and, I, and I looked at the base to the left of the swim and I thought right I've got to get in that bay so I've just moved I've only probably had the rods in an hour or so on that point and I've come into this bay where there's loads of reeds it just looks really carpy and it feels a lot better for myself and uh, I've got the two rods out, I've got one down the left hand margin of the reeds and I've got one on the opposite side to the reeds where it seems to be fairly deep, it's had a nice drop so you know I'm, 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 I've not put any bait out, I've just put single look baits out, nice stinky fish mill baits out there so you know it's, uh, it's trying something a little bit different which I think when you're on a big water like this that's what you've got to do, you can't put all your eggs in one basket so uh, that's the reason why I've done it. There's shells all over the place. So I'm guessing that is the natural diet of the carp in here. Very rich water, by the looks of it. Loads of them all over the banks. So it's no wonder there's decent sized carp in here. Let's, uh, let's hope we get a chance to see one. This is the mentality that you have to deal with. It's a huge lake, but no, they want to fish right over the top of where I'm fishing in a mega powerful speedboat. So I've just had it out with them. How much of the lake do you want is what they said. Well, it's a massive lake. Why do they want to fish where I am? Dumbass bass anglers. Noddies. I knew they wouldn't last long around there. Come flying in in the super boat. Two casts. Oh, there's no fish here. So they're gone. Yeah, yeah. Seen it a million times before. All the gear, no idea. We're back for a second day, and if I'm honest, I'm not that confident because we're really under equipped for a water like this. It's a massive piece of water. We were told that you only need to fish 40, 50 yards out to about 10 foot of water, and you'll get carp all day long, but um, not seeing any signs of fish. The water level's going down, which in my mind indicates that the fish are probably going to go a little bit deeper as well. So. If we had a boat, an echo sounder, and a few more marker floats and spoms, I'm sure we'd do all right, but all we're doing at the moment is blasting single hook baits out at range, where I'm guessing it's around about 25 foot, 30 foot of water, which is where we've been told to fish. So, you know, it'd be lovely to get a fish from here and, and finish the nice ending, but um, I think instinct is telling me that it's gonna be a bit of a struggle, but we'll keep trying anyway. Main man has just had a bite. We're into our first fish on the big lake. Come on, dude. Oh. Yes! Oi, oi! Oh, you the man! Awesome! What a lake to catch a fish from. That's bang on, that is, dude. Fucking good <laughs> lad, man. I've chopped a bit for you. Chopped a bit for that.
You've got the rob, mate. Lovely coloured carp, really golden. Well nailed, mate. The rig doing the business. All right, this is the second day, and we finally got one from the new lake. It's not easy. It's a huge stretch of water. You have to find where the fish are, and obviously they were a little deeper than we expected from yesterday. That band of rain looks like it's about to hit us at any minute and the forecast isn't good the rest of the day. One of the worst storms apparently for quite a while in this region so we're just getting ready for it and typically we're not as prepared as we should be for this water. We said earlier on about not having the right gear, boats, echo sounders etc. Well we haven't got a brolly either. We've got some waterproof gear We've got bivvies, but they're in the campsite. They have to be kept as the pitched tents, the permanent pitched tents. So um, we've had to leave them there. And all we've got at the minute is Christian's makeshift tent, <laughs> makeshift shelter, which is a barra cover. And there's the man himself sat inside it. You comfy in there, dude? Yeah. <laughs> That's the life of a rock star in there, isn't it? <laughs> This is metal. This is metal. It's nails, mate, nails. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna get a soaking in a minute by the looks of it, so yeah, it should be interesting. This looks cozy. <laughs> Not. <laughs> as long as it keeps us dry though, that's what matters. Look at the old days, makeshift. Yeah, proper makeshift, because that does look like a serious storm. There's the signs, trees are starting to get a little bit rustly and it's getting even greyer. Yeah, it's going to happen any minute I think. Dope, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to California. <laughs> As you can see behind me, it's absolutely lashing it down. And I know this is a bit of a plug, but thankfully I brought my jacket with me. This is the ripstop thermal jacket from Avid, and all I can say is it's the absolute dog's dangly. Unfortunately, I've not brought my bottom half with me because I expected the weather to be a lot better than it is. Um, so that half is, is proper drenched, but the top half is nice and dry. But it's been a great trip, really enjoyed it. It's looking like it's going to be a blank for me on this lake, unfortunately, because I've only got about an hour left. You never know, something could happen, I suppose. But um, it's been a really, really great trip. I've met so many nice people. I've had a lovely adventure. I've fished three cracking waters. And all I can say is, is if anybody out there is interested in coming and fishing in California, don't come in February because the weather's all over the place, as it is on this occasion. But there's some great waters to fish and you can have a fantastic time out here. And if you're interested in coming out here, then contact Christian via Instagram or Facebook and he'll put you right. But I hope you've enjoyed watching this trip. It's been another adventure and I look forward to my next one. Welcome, lights.